Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello everyone. Uh, good day. Today we will be talking about scanning electron microscope for MST six one three could advance materials characterization. Uh, when talking about SEM scanning electron microscope, um, definitely we need to to see what was actually happened in the past historically. Uh, talking about SEM, uh, transmission electron microscope was first constructed in 1931. And then in 1938, yeah, um, the first uh, scanning transmission electron microscope was first uh, uh, introduced and or we see developed by von Adern. Uh, by restoring the electron beam in a TEM, Transmission Electron Microscope. And following that, in 1942, the first SEM bar, for sample, was introduced by working. And in 1965, the first uh, commercial scanning electron microscope was introduced by Cambridge Scientific Instrument. And the resolution at that time is around 50 nanometers. And today, we will be able to get the resolution as less than one nanometers. This is like a huge transformation to reveal the structure and morphology of uh, one particular specimen. What is SEM? Uh, scanning electron microscope is a microscope that produces an image by using an electron beam that scans the surface of the specimen, which is a sample, inside a vacuum chamber. Okay, there is no air and etc. What can we do or what we can actually get from SEM or some sort of investigation that we can do? Number one is we'll be able to get some information on the topography and morphology of a sample, some chemistry of it, in which that possibly we can see that there is a different of uh, element uh, due to different of the morphology then it has to be combined with EDX, which is the energy dispersive X-ray component. We can also sort of see in the crystallograph uh, orientation of grains. And other than that is that in situ experiment can also be performed these days by including some, it could be reaction with atmosphere, uh, effects of temperature and many more. Okay. Um, one of the things that we can actually highlight here is that SEM is uh, relatively easy for the sample preparation. And interestingly, a uh, big sample is one of the concerns. And it is the relative how big a sample is one of the considerations that we need to uh, consider uh, during the experiment. How does it looks like? It looks like okay, these are sort of um, examples of scanning electron microscope images. Yeah, if you can see the first image on the left, FM atomic force microscope cantilever tip that was actually captured by SEM image. This tip is actually, uh, has been used actually to, to scan uh, on the, on your sample in the FF setup to see the atomic topography and etc. Second one was, is an heat, blood cells, calcium phosphate crystal, microstructure of open carbon, diamond thin film. So those are very beautiful image that we actually can capture using scanning electron microscope. Uh, inter interesting about the calcium phosphate down here, if you see uh, bottom right, uh, calcium phosphate crystal. It is a colorful image 
However, this is actually uh, post-processing of the image. Normally, under SM, we can only get black and white, but under certain circumstances that we have the post-editing in which we include certain software, we can do some editing. So the instrument in brief, uh, we have the electron gun on the top one. This is highly important. Electron gun is to 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 actually to to be uh, the source of the electron which hits yeah sample. Other than that, we have the condenser lens, objective aperture, scanning coil, objective lens. Until you can see, there is a stitch and sample chamber. Um, yeah, some sort of uh, alignment on the top is the gun alignment control, pneumatic airlock valve. This is important to ensure the free air and gases within the chamber. So component of the instrument includes electron gun, electromagnetic optics, scan coils, sample stitch detectors, vacuum system, computer hardware and software. Yeah, this is highly important. And seeing the scanning electron microscope structure, which is some overview of it, uh, a focused electron beam uh, with a variation of electrovolt uh, in the range of 2 until 10 scans on the surface. And several types of signal are produced and detected as a function of position on the surface. The space resolution can be as high as one nanometer. So, um, different type of signal gives different information, and of course, one once your, your the electron that bombarded onto your specimen on the surface produces different signal. So, this signal in response to the interaction between the first electron located on the sample, after some interaction, they are producing signals. So the signals can be in different uh, responses, which give different information. A, secondary electrons, which is the surface structure. Backscatter electrons, surface structure and average elemental information. X-rays and OJ electrons, elemental composition with different thickness sensitivity. So those are the basic signals, uh, signals that we can get after we first hit the sample with the electron. And how the image form, we know that the electron beam hit the specimen and then it goes to the detector and we have the amplifier and from the amplifier all the data and sort of can be, uh, can be seen on screen uh, by passing through the cathode ray tubes, it's forming uh, the trend and etc. And some selection of signal can give information on the elemental composition by measuring the energy. So we can go one by one to see how this uh, scanning electron microscope are uh, functioning. Uh, number one is electron gun. We want many electron per time unit per area, which is correspond to the condition of high current density and as small as electron spot as possible. Uh, traditional guns, uh, they're using thermionic electron guns, electron emitted when a solid is heated. Uh, yeah, we can use the tungsten wire or lanthanum borite crystal. In modern um, SEM, uh, we use field emission gun. So now, nowadays, we many SEM is using this one. So they, they, they call it field emission electron microscope. So FISEM, well, I think whatever the now the, the name that is being used, but the basic principle is still electron microscope. So the field emission gun 
is a cool gun, a strong electric feel uh, is used to extract all the electrons. And normally we are using the single crystal of tungsten etch to a thin tip. Detectors. Uh, traditional detectors will have backscatter electron detector, which is a solid state detector. Secondary electron detector, ever heard uh, Tolly? And this detector are very uh, to give different information. Back to the principle on how SEM works. SEM uses electrons instead of light to form an image. A normal microscope will use a normal light. But SEM uh, to give you high resolution of image uh, using electron as the source, okay, instead of light. So a beam of electron is produced at the top of the microscope by hitting a metallic filament, which is, uh, this is at the electron gun uh, area. The electron beam follows a vertical path through the column of the microscope. It makes its uh, way through electromagnetic lenses, which focus and direct the beam down towards the sample. So once uh, it hits the sample, other electrons, which is uh, backscattered or secondary electrons, are ejected from the sample. This is like uh, in, in, in the form of responses. Uh, detectors collect the secondary or backscattered electron and convert them to a signal that is sent to a viewing screen similar to uh, the one in an ordinary television, which is the producing uh, an image. Okay. And how do we get the image? Uh, the electron gun. So electron gun will hit the sample and there are some sort of mapping in terms of like all the mapping is correspond to the grid that it can be seen. So it transform from the detector to the image. Okay. This is sort of mechanism if you can see that. Yeah. You repeat the same thing and we'll see one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. And finally, after many uh, processes, you can see some sort of image being formed. Okay, talking about the electron beam and sample interaction. Uh, the incident electron is scattered in the sample, uh, both elastically and elastically. Elastic means that it doesn't lose the energy and elastic uh, will lose the energy when it is interacted. So this gives rise to a very signal that we can detect more on that. Let me see next slide. Interaction volume increases with increasing acceleration, acceleration voltage and decreases with increasing atomic number. So this can be seen like if you have the high atomic number or you will have medium atomic number or lower atomic number. So that will actually affect the interaction. If you have the low accelerating voltage, medium acetylene voltage, they'll be producing different responses. These slides are showing the signals from the sample. So you have the incoming electrons, you have OG, backscattered electrons, secondary electrons, X-ray and cathodomation, which is the light. So those are the um, signals. Uh, produced after we hit the sample with the electrons. Okay, talking about the signal, how and where does the signal come from? See incident beam electron on the top one. Okay, and then 
um, you also can see the secondary electron production down here a little bit. Moving down, we can see backscatter electron going even deeper, primary X-ray excitation, Bremsstrahlung, uh, continuum radiation, uh, continuum medicine excitation down here. So this sample map, which is the overview from the uh, from the side, we can see that the diameter of the electron interaction volume is larger than the electron spot. Therefore, resolution is poorer than the size of the electron spot. What is secondary electrons? Secondary electron is generated from the collision between the incoming electrons and the loosely bound outer electron and it has low energy uh, between 10 to 50 electrovolts. Only second electron generated close to surface, which is escape, uh, to surface escape topographic information is obtained. So this is a topographic information well, from the secondary electron. Number of the secondary electron is greater than the number of the incoming electron, definitely. Is, uh, and we differentiate it as secondary electron one and secondary electron Secondary electron one are generated by incoming electron beam as they enter the surface. High resolution signal with the resolution which is only limited by electron beam diameter. Secondary electron two are generated by backscattered electron that have returned to the surface after several inelastic scattering events. Uh, these electrons uh, come from a surface area that is bigger than spot of the incoming electrons, which the resolution is poorer than the secondary electron one exclusively. So this figure actually, actually uh, the, the figure explaining the mechanism and interaction. What are backscattered electrons, BSE? A fraction of incident electron is retarded by electromagnetic field of the nucleus. And if the scattering angle is greater than 180 degree, the electron can escape from the surface. So high energy electrons, we consider is elastic scattering, uh, but it is fewer than, fewer BSC than uh, secondary electron. We differentiate BSE as one and two. Okay, how do we say this BSE? versus secondary electron. For instance, this is a comparison. Secondary electron produces higher resolution image than backscattered secondary electron. By placing the secondary electron detected inside the lens, mainly secondary electron one are detected. And the resolution will be one to two nanometers, which is highly possible if you can see down there. Right. Talking about X-ray, X-ray are photons. They are not electron. Electron is the source in SEM, but X-ray is the responses that we are having, or the signal that we'll be getting after interaction between the electron, which is the first incoming electron. Poorer spatial resolution than BSE and Second electron. Uh, each element has fingerprint X-ray signal. It means that if you have carbon, nitrogen, or oxygen, each uh, of these uh, uh, element will show different fingerprint of signal. So that's why we can actually differentiate between carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen according to the X-ray signal, which is correspond to the energy that we will be having. Uh, relatively few X-ray signal are emitted, and the data is inefficient. Relatively long signal collecting times are needed. Okay, uh, they are, these are some advantages in comparison of using scanner electron microscope over optical microscope. Uh, and of course, you can see and read it. This is very obvious uh, in terms of resolution and depth of field. Okay, this is the schematic uh, setup of SEM. 
can get topographic contrast error arises because scan return depends on the angle of incidence between the beam and sample. Okay. This is the backscattered electron, different surface sensitivity. We talk about the, we talk about this just now. Uh, it depends on the area and the investigation and also the energy and responses of the electron onto the depth of one particular sample. Okay. Uh, this is some comment on the resolution. Hope you can understand it. You can read somewhere as well. And then it's, that's it for today because you cannot see more than the time that we are supposed to. And this is the time given. Thank you very much for today. Assalamualaikum.